Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. I live off crumbs like a rat. I'm Brendan here with Luke. Yes. And Jonathan. That's me. And today we're talking about the 2016 film War Dogs, uh, which is Luke's pick, but he does not want to lead the charge. But before that, I guess, before whoever is leading the charge, I guess me. Let's talk about what everybody felt. Luke, short and sweet, what'd you think? It was fine, I guess. I didn't think it was anything special. Okay, Jonathan. Uh, I didn't think I would like this movie. And I liked it more than I thought I would. Okay. Um, eh. Is kind of how I feel, just eh. Like, I, the way I feel about almost every single Todd Phillips movie is that the movie would be better if it had been given to someone who wasn't Todd Phillips. With the exception of, like, Borat, I guess. Because, like, I'm not, like, the biggest Borat fan, but you cannot deny that Borat has had some legs. People That's remember it. Borat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but everything else. And we can get we can get into Todd Phillips. I think that's I think that's an important talking point for this movie is Todd Phillips and all of his Todd Phillips glory. Um Yeah, I don't know. This movie was fine, I guess. Yeah. I don't like Miles Teller, to be honest. Um, you know, you, I have like a a weird like. I think that he's good, but I just don't like him, and I can't pinpoint. Just, like, I dislike him so much. Like I feel like I should like him more because he is pretty good. Is he? But I think so. I he I like Whiplash. I, okay, so I like Whiplash. He's he's not bad in Whiplash. He's not the best part of it. Yeah, I don't think he's doing that much in Whiplash, but I guess he's he's not hindering the movie in any way. I, he's adding to it, I suppose. Um, but other than that, like, wh- what else is he good in? He's not. He, I don't particularly like him. I guess it's just Whiplash. Yeah. Whiplash is like... It's like yeah, you know, your opinion of him is carried by a good movie, but it's not even good because of him. Like he's he's, he's in Fant Forstick and he fucking sucks in it. I mean everybody well, sucks Force, in that movie, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. I don't think that that's really fair to like put on him. I oh well, actually to be fair, uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, the the Johnny Storm in that movie, Michael B. Jordan, he's fun at least. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, that movie sucks shit. I actually he's, knew a kid in that movie. He's on, okay. One of the younger versions of. Uh, the Fantastic Four people. Fun fact. Oh, I just pulled up the IMDb. Is it Evan Hanneman? How'd you know? Because he just looks like someone you would know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I literally I saw his IMDb picture. I was like, this is probably the guy. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's too funny. Um, yeah, anyway, War Dogs. Um, Jonah Hill's fun in this movie. He's good. Are we walking through it, or are we just? He's a, he's, I, th- I think we can go characters first. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jonah Hill is the best part of this movie. He's just he's fun to watch. I think. Um, yeah, I mean he, when he's I, having fun and fun to watch. Yeah, it's good. I think my issue with Jonah Hill in this movie is that he's basically the exact same character. That's my issue with Jonah Hill. No, no, no. The the exact exact same same character that's in um... Did you say Wolf of Wall Street? Because I disagree. Yes, I do. I think Wolf of Wall Street is very similar. He's like a full-on psychopath in this movie, though. Yeah, but it's... I haven't seen it, but he's almost a psychopath. Wolf of Wall Street. I, I think it's a different character, but there are people online who agree with you, so I I I'm not interested in the whole debate on this topic because I think it I think you could go either way with it pretty easily. I don't not see where you're coming from. I just I, I think this character is like full on just off the wall batshit insane. 
Yeah, I, I think towards the end I was like, oh my god, why? He like he's fucking everything up. Why? Like, yeah. You know, the like. But th- this is based off of. Uh, is it true? Though? It's real. Yeah. Yes, it is. So, I mean, like, I guess he actually did. Fuck it up yeah. for no reason. I'm not sure if it was actually the bad guy who uh who ratted them out. But uh a yeah, lot of it is I'm true. The one I'm thing sure that I was... thought that was interesting is the main character uh in real life is significantly older uh than Ephraim. The uh like a good five years older. Miles Teller's character is in this movie. Like or the person he's based off of is in yeah, this movie. Yeah, I saw that. That's he's he's the singer at the old home. Which he's now a musician, so well, hey. Um, I believe, or actually, I, I, from what I saw, uh, is and the child are not real. Um, they they essentially added that to this film to make him more sympathetic, hmm. uh, which I think makes the movie worse because yeah, it's impossible to sympathize with him because he's completely in the wrong uh, through his entire relationship. <laughs> And uh, also, like, on paper, why are you making me sympathize with this man who is committing crimes and running guns? Like, Yeah. Also, Annie de Armas is just way too good to be with Miles Teller. Yeah, she's, she's fun in this movie. Too. I mean, she's not really given anything to do other than being the no. upset wife rightfully so <laughs> but i like most your performances i also think that that's kind of weird that she didn't exist in real life then they didn't make like give her much to do and then they just made him in the wrong like it's such yeah a they they wanted to make him more sympathetic and it probably works for some people just by nature of being like a family man who goes back to his wife at the end but like fuck that yeah no if anything, I don't know. I thought it kind of made him worse for continuing. Yeah, for some yeah. Of the shit that they pull like it's just uh, that's just bad. And the fact that like I don't know how like in in real world how much is actually uh, Ephraim's fault and how much is actually uh, Dave's fault, right? For everything, like it's a little. I don't know. Like, there's there's not enough evidence to be like, yeah, it was Miles Teller's character who was the good guy. And also, I just think it's funny how like I looked up a picture of what they both look like, and they just decided like, nah, Jonah Hill's playing that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like kind of similar to what they did with uh with Wolf of Wall Street, where they're like, oh, well, we just want this character to be crazy. So, I'm um, sometimes I think that's the better way to do it like um if you try to make someone look just like someone and act just like someone yeah i don't think you'd need to do that but it can like, be impressive sometimes like i don't know I, there's just Bale does of, it really well there's kind of like a meme uh where it's like oh this like real life thing is getting a thing oh who am i who's playing my character they're like jonah hill you're like ah oh, fuck hey <laughs> i'm the bad guy slash like not, you know, I'm not the good guy or whatever you want to say. I don't think Jonah Hill exclusively plays the bad guy. I'm the comic relief. <laughs> I mean, he's often the comic relief, sure. I also don't think that he looks that different. Oh, he looks completely different. I mean, he looks different, but like, it's not like he was. No, he uh... was never that big until like late later. Okay. Well, the like, picture that uh, Brendan just pulled up is... Yeah, if you guy. look up just, like, his name and put it into Google, no. Like, it's very different. But no one can see that. Yeah. I mean, David is is so radically different to uh, Miles Teller as well. Yeah, yeah, he, definitely. But that's fine. I mean, it's the same, like, build or whatever you want to say. 
I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think you have to. Especially when it's characters like this, where, like, it fucking no one's going to know what these dudes look like without looking them up anyway. It, yeah. it doesn't serve anything to have the characters look like them. Like, you know, for, like, a, a Nixon film or, you know, like, you know, any president film, people yeah, have generally have a sense good. of what the person looked like. Uh, but, yeah, for this, like, who gives a fuck? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to say. There weren't so many memorable scenes as I was like expecting. And part of the reason why I, uh, I picked this movie is that, um, that movie thing said like, you will really like this. Yeah. This this movie's a movie lens. Movie Lens, yeah. Movie Lens, like, has it, has had it at, like, my second highest position for a while now. Since, like, 50 movies, and I've put in, like, 100 now. Yeah, this and movie is weirdly beloved by people. The story yeah. is interesting, like, learning of the real-life happenings of it. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I definitely didn't know anything about this. That's definitely true. I mean, I would have rather this movie just been a documentary. I agree. I can. I'm I just can thinking of like maybe well. reasons why I recommended it to you because, uh, like, you like Silicon Valley, right? For like just. The I I think the the well. movie does it based on people who have similar rankings to you. <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing: Silicon Valley, like. It's more accurate in a lot of different ways where this would be like if you just took Steve Jobs and like made him like a murderer or something <laughs> like it. I feel like they pretty much they had like full artistic license to just change. I mean, I everything. can't tell you how much uh, is like totally accurate, but it does seem. At least. Uh, I mean, like the important bits are. The fact that you know like they were they were gun runners and like because america changed their laws that allowed them to do this crazy thing yeah like that's that's the part that was interesting to me not like these people's story yeah i do think the story about how they got caught was very interesting and that has to be true but like everything leading up to it was kind of eh, whatever for me yeah and i i feel like if that's actually accurate Ephraim's just fucking stupid like it just it it made me cringe in the same way that a uh, mouse hunt made me cringe. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Where they like decided like I'm just gonna rip off everybody. Like, okay, cool. Like you're gonna rip off the person who gave you the job. I mean, that's that's all kind of set up in his character, right? Like he cares about getting himself money and he trusts no one. Mm-hmm. But like he's mad, like oh, he got he got a four hundred percent profit. But it's like, dude, you got a thousand percent profit. Yeah. Like what? Why do you care? Like, and then on top of that, um, not paying the bag, dude. That was just wild. Yeah. I can't believe like that has to be true, right? Yeah, it's, it's so you know. little money in the yeah. in the scheme of how much they're about to make. Yeah crazy especially because the guy like the guy who did it clearly like knew how much money they were making from the like shipping perspective right because he he was aware of why they even needed to do it yeah but also like he was fine with like i'll take a hundred thousand and then they talk about it he they, they go the movie makes sure to go on and on about how much I feel like too long. Like we made an extra thirty million dollars. I think it's to set up how out. stupid he was for the, what he does later, which is not pay him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they do specifically say they're going to make an extra. I think three million dollars. Uh, and then even more later on, they mention how it, it it's even more money. Yeah, because of another reason. Yeah, it was a. Uh, yeah, and I I just felt like there were know. no real memorable scenes. Like a, there was a lot of like they sat down at their office and like talked. Um, I did feel like the scene where they uh, 
where the one guy is like kind of like oh i, I want to have both of you sit and talk with uh what's his name charles chungus was that his name what are you talking about <laughs> uh the ralph slutsky oh Kevin their investor yeah what about I mean, that scene I, I thought that was fine because the payoff later on. But like a lot of scenes just seemed like they were like lacking. Yeah. Like inspiration, maybe. I don't know. They just seemed like, yep. And we have to talk about the hangover. Yeah. So this is the thing. I want to talk about Todd Phillips because he kind of sucks. Like, <laughs> I think. His movies would all be better given to someone else. So, like, there's this Joker. He's a producer on the Limitless TV show. Well, he didn't. He didn't actually direct uh, Joker, did he? He did. He directed Joker. Wait, hmm. do you think Joker sucks? I don't think Joker sucks. I think Joker could have been better. Okay. Joker has some problems. Yeah, I, I mean, it's still pretty good. It's pretty good. I liked it. I liked the fact that they written, they wrote in like the potential, uh, like, hey, you two could be like half siblings. I think Joker is his best movie, and that like Joker isn't like a standout great movie. So like for your best really, movie, I think I think The Hangover is probably his best movie. But then he proceeded to make like two it. more exactly the same movies. I don't like The Hangover that much. I mean, Hangover one or two and three are, are worse, but I don't like the first one that much either. They're they're literally the exact same movie, just over again. I would prefer Due Date to Hangover. Due Date's really a fine. I did not like movie. Due Date. I thought I I don't like movies that are so like uh black and white. I'm like you're the straight man and you're the goofy crazy one. Isn't that The Hangover? Um, there's definitely a goofy, crazy one, but it's not like just a straight man. Also, that's this, this movie that we're talking about. I know. That's <laughs> true. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a thing. I don't know. Apparently he's making Joker 2 as well. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be a nightmare. With Joaquin Phoenix again? <clears throat> I believe so. I'm amazed that he agreed to that. Tell you the mm -hmm. truth. Yeah, I don't even know where you really go from there. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't have too many, like, nice things to say. I, yeah, I do kind of feel like his directing choices are just, like, about, like, efficiency, <laughs> like, pumping them out. Like, a lot of the shots aren't particularly, like, oh, this one's going to be, like, sick. Like, not that you need, like, sick, you know. I enjoy cinematography. cinematography. I think that it's an important aspect of film. Yeah, but, but I don't think I don't think like, this movie has that good of cinematography. No, it's just... No, absolutely it's, not. Oh, okay. I actually <laughs> hate the way that it is uh, color-corrected. Everything's so, like... I hate the meme of, like, when you're in Mexico, it's yellow. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when this you're, movie was that. When you're in Eastern Europe, it's blue. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was very, very, very stereotypical and like to the max. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't even. It wasn't even punchy. Like it wasn't. And then the thing is, when they when when they go places, there's like, there's there, there's only like a second of like here's the establishing shot for where they are, and then they're like, I don't know, like in Vegas, they're like, are they're in an airport? like a weapons you know thing mm -hmm. there was like an establishing shot showing the strip and then like yep they're at an airport that may be mccarran i don't know and then um when they went to eastern europe when they went to albania it was like here's some buildings like here's a picture of some buildings basically and then like all right here they are and like when when they went to go, I I feel like maybe I'm wrong here, but the part where they're like, you want to shoot, to test them, and they went into a like wherever backyard and like shot at barrels. 
I feel like that scene was fucking crazy how like just mediocre that was. I I mean I think like every scene is mediocre. Yeah, I was about to say like I don't, I don't know. know. I, I felt like surprising. I felt like when they're in Jordan, uh it was it was nice. Like I felt like you got some establishing shots that actually like were the characters talking. You got uh like a good idea of like the surroundings. You know what scene when they're bothered me for a dumb reason? Mm-hmm. When what they you? when they meet Bradley Cooper at the casino, the scene where mm-hmm. they sit down and are talking is so fucking dark. Like it's lit so weirdly. Like half of Bradley <laughs> Cooper's face is in shadow. No casino's that dark. The whole point of a casino hold is on, to, hold on. to no, no, no. That's, take away the sense of time. There. I have to disagree there. There are casinos uh, that are like completely like almost pitch black in them. Okay, most casinos. The whole point is the psychology of time passes and you don't realize there's not windows there's not clocks it's light there's there's flashing fucking lights and there's uh, sounds going off because you need to step into this timeless place and spend money i do feel like they those are actual casinos where they were i think they shot in the um caesars yeah but lighting for real life and lighting for movies doesn't always work out yeah but no, it's no, not no. one-to-one it could be literally super bright on set and then you film it and it looks like shit because it's bright. Like, yeah. And I don't even mean the casino in general. Like when they're at the blackjack table or whatever, I think it was blackjack, whatever table they're at, um, was fine. It's just when they sit down, it just got weirdly dark. Also, we, we have to talk about how Todd Phillips kind of, I don't know. Do you think he like loves Bradley Cooper? Like, <laughs> What do you mean? Like all like so many movies either that he or produced were like Bradley Cooper stars. It's a very similar I mean that happens uh, a lot with the directors. They have their they have their people. They have the boys. They have them boys, if you will. Think of how many but, uh, Nolan films have I Christian really, Bale. <laughs> I, I do feel like uh I like Bradley Cooper's like transformation in this it's very like a subtle difference but i feel like it really makes his character look different from like how he looks in other movies because in other movies they like try to make him like attractive and this one they like made his eyes like red as fuck made mm-hmm. his skin pale as shit and then they were like all right make him more like magnifying glassing magnifying glasses uh like glasses where, like, it makes his eyes look huge and really accentuates how, like, fucking red his eyes are. Kind of reminds me of uh, Office Space. The one guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought the Bradley Cooper stuff was good in this movie. I thought I thought it, he was fine, and everything they did with him was fine. I didn't care too much about it, but yeah, it was yeah. all right. We've been talking about this movie for 23 minutes. I think I like it less than when we started. <laughs> like I like, same, same, but we haven't gone through because like because there's fucking nothing to talk about. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, it's it's true. Like it's a weak pick. <laughs> you said um, it, it was mine. Hmm. You said that as if it was somebody else's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I, th- I said it as if it were mine, and it is. Like, on paper, this movie should be good. Like, the cast yeah. is good. I mean, I don't like Miles Teller, but, like, seeing Miles Teller in something isn't enough for me to say this movie's going to suck. I just don't much care for Miles Teller. Yeah. He's um, not, like, a, I, when I see him, I'm not like, oh, he's going to be in a good movie, you know? Like, yeah. I think that's fair enough. But at the end of the day, I mean, like, we've we've seen another movie that's very similar to this, and in my opinion, is better and has better actors and the same actor in one case. Um, Which in, one? Uh, fuck. Well, it's just completely uh, uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, I thought you were saying we watched a similar movie for the podcast. I was like, what the fuck no, are you talking no. about? But like, <laughs> I think we've all watched Wolf of Wall Street. I have not. It's been all a while. Right, well, it's, I liked Wolf of Wall Street last It's better time than this it. movie, as yeah. I recall. 
I gave it. I, I'd probably give it like an eight out of ten. But this movie is so similar. It's almost like the Hangover thing, right? It's so similar to Wolf of Wall Street that like it's hard for me to enjoy it without like comparing it to Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street came out before this, right? That was like 2013 or something. Yeah, yeah, like years before. Yeah, 2013. Enough to watch this movie. I, I do like... think this movie is kind of trying to be Wolf of Wall Street. Like, I feel like Todd Phillips is trying to be Scorsese. He's trying to, he's trying to make that movie with this story. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't work. That's exactly how I feel. I, I don't. I wouldn't say it doesn't work, but it is not as good. Like. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess even Wolf of Wall Street, when they're like fucking eyeballing the camera, explaining the housing situation to you, that worked for me better than Miles Teller talking over the movie. Explaining also, what's another going issue on. I have with this movie, I just remembered. Um, the two characters, they sound very similar, and it is confusing. What two characters? Uh... Yeah, about? Are you the two main characters. Jonah Hill and Miles Teller, I do not think yeah, they sound I, similar. Yeah, I think they sound shockingly similar. I don't agree. <laughs> oh, speaking of sounds, though, did you guys think Miles Teller was fucking up the company name like half the time? Like, it sounded like he was saying the wrong letters. A-E-I. It sounded like he was saying, like, A-E-I sometimes, A-U-I sometimes. One time I definitely heard him say A-E-Y, and I was like, holy shit, he did it. <laughs> you did uh, it right. I didn't, I didn't notice because I didn't really care about the company name. It just like I, I just like heard it one time, and every other time I, I was like listening for it because also I, like, I specifically looked that up after the movie. Like, did it have a meaning? And yes, it did. Actually, <laughs> it was uh the names of all of his his father's kids. Mm. So the E is Ephraim. And uh, what's also funny is, even though he went to prison, uh, he still uh, was a government contractor. Ephraim was after he went to prison because he uh, he had a spinoff corporation that wasn't banned, <laughs> and they just let him continue to do business while he was in prison. Nice, and that's some wild shit. And he was also when he got caught, he was like twenty fucking three like miles teller's character was like 28 27 or something mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They're, they're the same age in this movie right because they went like to school probably together. the right artistic choice yeah probably makes more sense it's easier to explain the relationship i guess yeah then like hey what are you doing and then it would be too similar to <laughs> like wolf of wall street i don't know but uh yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't like Jonah Hill in this movie as much as I like him in Wolf of Wall Street or uh, his other, like, bigger named uh, product or bigger name. Oh, no, I mean, this is not his best movie. I just think he was he was having fun. He wasn't bad. I can see movie. why there's, like, a cult following, though. I think for this movie, I can't. <laughs> I don't get it. It's it's just got like uh, just enough to be like it's pretty interesting, but not enough to like. I I feel like movies where you can't like fill everything in. Um, people end up like researching it, rewatching it, and stuff. And I feel like this movie, the way it like narratively is structured, it doesn't. It leaves a lot of like weird holes. That you're like, wait, what? I don't know. After I finished this movie last night, I, I started another movie with Jonah Hill in it. Uh, I was feeling some Jonah Hill that I think is a, a vastly superior movie. Mm -hmm. Which one? Accepted. Oh, you're going way back. I really like Accepted. Even It's not it's a, a great movie, movie. but It's like, a good movie. You know, my, you my girlfriend, girlfriend loves Accepted. That's one of her favorite movies. You seen Accepted, Jonathan? I have not, not even heard of it. It's the it's Justin Long, 
makes a fake college because he doesn't get into college. And mm-hmm. Shenanigans ensue. Now, what's better? Your Justin Long performance, okay? Accepted? Thoughtful. Or waiting? I take accepted over waiting. I think it's tough. I, I, I think they're both, like, good. Like, solid movies. I like Justin Long, even though he's mostly just playing, like, an awkward dude in most movies. Yeah. He's in Jeepers Creepers, which is an unfortunate movie series now. Yeah. I mean, apparently that happened before Yeah, the first one. Did you ever watch Jeepers Creepers, Jonathan? Um, I don't think so. You had to. You we know. watched it so many times at my house. You had to have been over at some point when we watched it. <laughs> I didn't really go over to your house too much that I remember. But you were over for like Trevor's birthday parties, though. You guys watch it at birthday parties? Probably. It's like a horror movie. It's like a dumb... Um, I used like, to be a little bitch, though, and I hated they're, it. They're in the cornfield. It's, it's, he, like, the monster's a scarecrow, faces. and it, like, takes parts from people. And, like... I definitely have not seen this. Uh, I honestly... I, I found them interesting. We will... Never watch them. <laughs> no, you're never yeah, going to. Well, what... <laughs> like, it came out later like in 2010 but like apparently this should happen in like 1990 so like the movie industry or whoever like signed them up signed the director up was just like okay with the fact that like yep i was banging a 13 year old what wait what? the the director yeah. was convicted of child like in molestation the, in the er, late or in the early 90s right like way before this movie was incepted that is wild and they were just like, yeah, it's it's fine. He can make another one. And it, it, are there three now? Uh, there are two. Three uh, was in production, I think. Or maybe three came out. Three was happening. I don't know if it ever fully happened. I think I remember watching two and being like, I don't particularly like this. Oh, three apparently did happen. Apparently there's a fourth. Fourth was, is in the works then, but... Uh... Mm. It does not have him. I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there, there's really not that much to talk about with this movie. I mean, like... Yeah, we started talking about Justin Long. Because we... <laughs> <laughs> like, there, there's... The music in this movie is just what you would expect. Yeah. Uh, the cinematography in this movie is... It's all right. Although I, I will say one oddly matched uh, musical choice was the beach scene where they get the contract because that's when Wish You Were Here starts playing, right? Mm-hmm. A little weird. When they got the three hundred million, yeah, we won. And also, I I just felt like there was no reason. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like there wasn't like any kind of devolution of their uh like friendship. It was just kinda he was just like, I'm gonna go crazy now. I've decided. Yeah. I'm gonna go crazy now. It was basically he gives him the contract and instantly you see Jonah Hill's like He's fuck this. It. Yeah. That's when he but decides also, to burn it all down. Yeah. He could just like quit and then make a new company or something. Not and with that would... contract though. Yeah, with the contract. I mean he has ownership of seventy percent, but Jonah Hill can still like quit working there and just own seventy percent of it and start his own business. Well Jonah Hill owns yeah, but... all of it, that's the point. Is like he doesn't want to give any of it away. Mm-hmm. Like, the only reason he was paying the character, like, David beforehand is because he saw it as, like, out of the goodness of his heart type thing. And then once it became an official contract, he's like, fuck this. No. My money. Yeah. It also... Trying to understand the, the workings of a sociopath is just kind of like, I don't know. 
I never will. Yeah. It's uh, it's also I mean, very telling in is. the diner series scene where he's willing to give him two hundred thousand dollars after shorting the people saving him three million dollars a hundred thousand dollars because that money never actually meant anything to him that little amount of money he just mm. didn't want to give away money yeah i do think the fact that uh they were being mic'd at that point was funny i did like that but i think they could have like it everything was explained in such like a like it, it, things should not be explained in voiceover, and I don't like it when it is. Like, find a way to explain it in a, in not voiceover if you can. Yeah, I, I mean, it's the principle of show, don't tell, right? Like, yeah. But I mean, sometimes it's unavoidable. Again, to go back to Wolf of Wall Street, like, you're not going to get out all of the information that the viewing public needs to understand the housing crisis without some type of voiceover. I just think Wolf of Wall Street does it better. I mean, Wolf of Wall Street does it in a way where at least he's, like, talking on the phone. You know what I mean? Well, there's also, like, there's the scene of Margot Robbie literally just looking at the camera and explaining something. Hmm. I don't quite remember that. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that like the bathtub scene where she's just drinking champagne and like they don't even bother with continuity of like her champagne glass or anything. They're like, we just need to info dump right now. I've also seen clips of uh, Leonardo DiCaprio talking to the screen. Yeah, it's, it's a thing they use in the movie a couple times because there's a lot of information. But I, I, also, I voiceover, over... like voiceover take that over can voiceover. be done in interesting ways like that like uh, it doesn't have to be like straight voiceover yeah i would consider that basically voiceover i would as well but it's I artistic mean, like right right that's like, what i'm saying like the like the texts on the uh from secret white life of walter mitty it, it's yeah. it's more than just yeah but it's done right tech. i feel exactly. you know like it's, this like, so, yeah yeah this, the voiceover saying. here i feel like is very like it's just on. Voiceover, yeah i'm just yeah. saying voiceover isn't inherently bad uh, again this movie's like, trying to be wolf of wall street and doing everything wrong like <laughs> like pan's labyrinth has a voiceover scene and i think it's probably one of the best scenes voiceover scenes of all time you know it's uh during a funeral and it goes to the uh, to the main character who's sitting there, and like what the uh, what the priest priest is saying, like matters. And it even though she's like not in the funeral anymore, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I i think i'm ready to give scores to everybody else i don't i don't have much more to i'm gonna just talk about other movies <laughs> do, do you want okay, to yeah, anything else you want to talk about uh no not specifically all right yeah then we can we can score luke what's it gonna be i think i'm gonna give this movie uh it's tough because i i didn't feel i didn't like hate this movie i think i'm gonna give this movie a six jonathan um a three yeah i'm gonna give it like a four yes i came in thinking i'd give it a five and then we, could, we couldn't even I last like I'd... 20 minutes with talking about the movie i thought i'd give it like a two or a one but you know it did impress me in some ways but one i just i don't like the humor in it like i didn't find any of it yeah. funny i wish it was i wish it was more real and then also like i didn't like i'm changing my, my four to three as well anymore. i think actually yeah it's just mm -hmm. like it was it was just like it was better than expected but it still wasn't that great it was just like sure yeah i'm changing my four to a three i, I was thinking about it and like four feels too high it, it, i'll never watch this movie again i wouldn't recommend this movie to anyone uh, yeah, I, I like I did not like unenjoy my time with it, but at the same time, I'll not watch it again. Uh, I, I mean, knowing what I know now, I would have been happier not having watched it. <laughs> what do you know now? <laughs> that the movie. I know the movie now. I've now seen the movie. I mean, somewhere along the lines, of, like we, we talked and you agreed like, yeah, it's worse. I mean, I was pretty critical of it, too. Yeah, um, I think like. 
I watched this late last night and I was just like I was just watching it and like nothing stuck out to me really and then having to reflect on that I was like oh things have stuck out and it's kind of bad actually <laughs> like I was ready to give it a five because I was like this movie basically doesn't exist in my mind I will never think of it again that's a five yeah five is like very middle of the road I think sixes can do that too but yeah. like if I like I enjoyed the watch I just will never watch it again and it wasn't like I can see the failure in the movie like i don't know how to describe it i mean what, what would you call a, a middle of the road movie that leaves no real impression on you um I, I mean it depends on if i enjoyed like if i enjoyed anything about it like what do you define middle of the road it's just like a bland ass movie this movie other than the bad shit this movie was bland and boring and then it was also like not because like what if you have a really bland movie but you have really good technical stuff like cinematography and like the characters are okay then i might be willing to give it a six yeah like, i'd give it like a six a tenet, yeah. like a tenet well, to, uh, well no that, see that was actually <laughs> part of my that was actually very we had to Ooh. talk about this now that's actually part of why i gave it a six because it's not as bad as tenet so i i would agree with you jonathan i just think and it is actively detracted in other categories. So the cinematography doesn't bring it up to a six. It just to salvages me, they it. they are the same. Like, it is very much like, yeah, okay, stuff is happening. I agree with the cinema cinematography being the same between uh, War Dogs and Tenet. No, like, Tenet has yep, better cinematography. Feels, no, not at all. In my what? opinion, I, I think they're both boring. I think both of them are very boring and, like, I, I don't. Like, all right, yeah, not, we found a I don't spot like here. to be the type of person who's like, "You're just wrong," but like, you're kind, you, you're kind of wrong. Ten, Tenet definitely has some boring stuff, but it does have some actually good cinematography. Tenet this movie also, has nothing. Cinematography. It also has like no heart to it as a movie. It's just bland. Listen, through don't and through. make me defend Tenet. <laughs> I don't like that movie, but in cinematography, if nothing else, Nolan can do cinematography. <laughs> Like, yeah, and plus, I, I'll say I like this movie more than Lost in Translation. I like this movie more than Tenet. And I certainly like this movie more than Mouse Hunt. See, that's the thing. Yeah, that, I, that's, I think... that's why uh, Lost in Translation is in my uh, I should have gone harder on it category for the awards because I, I definitely like this movie better than Lost in Translation, but Lost in Translation has a higher score because I I like I Lost in Translation more than this movie. Like Lost in Translation, uh, wow. was super boring, but like there were things that I could, like I could. Well, it might be like tainted because I wanted to like it, but like I could see why people would like that. I the people who I think would like this like it not for any of the reasons that I like it. I guess. But Jonathan, would you like better this movie or Mouse on? Probably this movie, because Mouse Hunt, I was actively, like, <laughs> wanted to stop watching, and this one, I was like, sure. Well, I've gotten good news. What's good news? Don't Did I get Mouse Hunt? Your crown has been taken from you. Okay, what crown? And why is this good news? This is the worst pick. Wow. According according to score, although according if we went back score. and yeah, if we redid it, I think Lost in Translation would go lower. That's true. But, if I uh, if I revise my Lost in Translation score, yeah. it would either be the same or a third lower. <laughs> See, I think for me though, right now, if I were to redo like what I you know what my scores are and whatnot, I think Tenant would be my like. Yep, I should have gave it lower. Yeah, Tenant and Lost in Translation are, are in that category for me right now. I think I would have dropped Lost in Translation 1, and I think I would have dropped Tenant by 2. I think I would drop Tenant by 1, Lost in Translation by 2. I think I would give Lost in Translation a 2. <laughs> I would give Tenant like a 3. Yeah, I would also give Tenant. Yeah. Um, be interesting. You know what we should do uh, at some point is just go back and be like, I think we we did it like off uh off stream off whatever you want to say but like if we were to redo this and just like go through all right what would you give this 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 just really quickly just write down what we would have given them without like 
without looking at our previous scores uh-huh. and see one how close they are and two uh, how they've changed. I think that would be interesting. I mean, we could we could certainly that do doesn't, that. That doesn't like interest me too much though. I think I think, I think a score time. I think a score in the moment because, is more valuable yeah, because it's fresh. I'm, I'm just I just know that I didn't have my scoring system really solidified well in my head when we scored those movies, so I know they are not accurate to what I have in my head now. Hmm. And plus, Jonathan gave fucking Snowpiercer a four. But like, I would have to watch that again to change it, and I don't want to do that. That is still it is still big pain that you gave Snowpiercer a four. I mean, maybe I went a bit harsh on it, but I slightly. You gave Lost in Translation a four, and Snowpiercer is a better movie than Lost in Translation. Both of them, I slightly didn't like watching. I think that that's a perfect like that's perfectly even. That makes sense. So you like mildly did not like watching this movie. Uh, this movie, I, I disliked more than I was okay with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you gave Snowpiercer and Foster a 4, you gave this a 3. So this, like, slid yeah. down. You enjoyed it less. Yeah. So you would have to hate a movie to give it a 1. Yeah. Like, regardless of its Jonathan technical thinks merits. Jonathan pretty like... fucking good. Though. I mean... I think what? <laughs> he, he, did, like, said, a... he gave Mouse on a 3, right? Yeah. I know, in that case... Jonathan must think Mouse Hunt's pretty fucking. Good. I don't think we'll ever see a one from you, Jonathan. I don't know, maybe. Because I, I think you could have a movie you hated as long as it was technically proficient. You'd be like, this yeah. was worth it. Yeah, I can think of a few ones, but I can like I definitely think there are ones out there. Yeah, I mean, and plus, any movie that's like recommended to you, or that like, oh, I've heard good things about this. Like, someone enjoyed it, so like, it it's very unlikely that your opinion is going to vary. Like, I feel like your variation in Snowpiercer is probably the biggest variation of any like. Uh, Mouse Hunt. I, mean, also I guess. Quite large. I guess I I would be willing <laughs> to give Snowpiercer a five because I didn't really take into account. Um, the plot was like not terrible. I hated the characters, if I remember though. You did. Like I don't, I don't think that they were good characters. I think that they were caricatures. Mm -hmm. I stand by that. Um, Mouse Hunt is actually the largest point gap that we have. Yeah, but for me, I feel like for that movie, uh, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> I like that movie. Um, but, uh, do you know yeah, what, do you know what the slightly, largest point like gap would actually be? Is if mm. if we watch some dumb meme bullshit movie, that's where the largest point gap would be. Because Luke would be like ten out of ten, good memes. What a good like movie! What? Like, like if we if we watch The Room, I would not know. I'd probably give it like I've seen The Room, so my my review is going to be you know not in the moment. you you would give, it, like, give the four. Oh, okay, that's surprising a low. I, I figure you would be like, good memes, what a good movie. I feel like I might do that. Memes are okay. They, it's part of the experience. Have you seen The Room? I haven't. Four is high. It's not a good movie. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> four is including the memes. Like, but I feel like, like, I feel like I would give uh, like Birdemic a pretty high score because it's pretty shit, but it's really I, I think that's bad. Yeah, I think that's crazy. <laughs> Listen, really I, I, I think, that, yeah, I think when it comes to comedy, though, I think that will be probably, I don't think, War Dogs is technically a comedy, Mouse Hunt is a comedy. Oh, yeah, this is, yeah, this movie's a buddy comedy that never is funny. That's, yeah, this, have even, have it, really, that's one thing about this movie is that it's we comedy. Haven't, we haven't done any comedies. This is where I leave you, like, kind of a comedy. Mouse Hunt, that's it, but I, I believe <laughs> yeah, our... Yeah, because comedies don't have to be, like, technically sound to be no, hilarious. No, right, yeah. So. I agree. Yeah, I, yeah, there, there was probably like one moment where I gave like a a small chuckle. Yeah, in War Dogs. But the thing is, like a movie like Birdemic, where it's, uh, or not, I guess Birdemic's a bad example because that's that's firmly into the category of, oh, these bad movies actually make us money, uh, so let's intentionally make a bad movie. Whatever the yeah. the predecessors to that, where they aren't trying to be bad, they're just actually bad. And they're funny was because Birdemic, they're bad. Was Birdemic trying to be bad? Yes. I think so, yeah. It's like, a, it's like a, what is it called? Sharknado and stuff. 
Yeah, the later Sharknadoes, like all that shit. So like you would rate that as a comedy. But like the predecessors to that, the ones that are just bad but are funny because they're bad, aren't actually comedy. So I would rank them way lower because they're funny by not achieving something. Not by nature of trying to achieve something. That's, that's where I land on those. But I, I, all I'm trying to say is I think comedies would have the largest scale of uh, probably of differentiation. We, we probably find different things funny. Yeah. And also, like, you can just be having, like, an off viewing, and you can be, like, it can probably affect your score by one or two points. Is there a Zoomer like... comedy? Mm. You, like think I have, you think I have Zoomer comedy? I think sometimes you have Zoomer comedy. <laughs> like, <laughs> sometimes you will say a quote, and you'll be like, it's from that meme. Like, I'm supposed to know this meme. I mean, if you did, it would be, like, it would at least have referential humor. But, like, that happens a lot. Show the meme and then reference. You'll the just meme quote. Topic. You'll just quote memes at me. Sometimes quoting memes are funny. Like, uh... <laughs> Jonathan, are you familiar with this meme? Put it in reverse, Terry. Yeah, put it in reverse, Terry. Is that the fireworks one? Yeah. Have you seen the edit, the Minecraft edit where it's a TNT block? <laughs> like, you're not helping your case, Jonathan. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny. If you've seen it, it's funny. It is, it is fun. It's Thank fun, you. friend. It's fun to laugh about but, stuff. But, like, we'll literally, see. we just had a conversation, like, where you were like, do you think I have Zoomer humor? And then the first thing you bring up is a Minecraft edit of a meme. <laughs> I played Minecraft, so it's funny. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it would be funny to you. Oh, man. Brennan's like, no, Minecraft is no laughing matter. I, I can literally picture what it is, and it doesn't sound funny to me. Oh, my God, I'm pulling it up. Fuck's sake. Put it in reverse, Harry. Minecraft edit. All right, well. Oh, it's the first one that shows up on YouTube. It's not of, like. Of course, it's the first one. You've typed in Minecraft no, no, edit. No, no. Thanks. All right, no, thanks, everybody. For... Minecraft edit. It was the first one. And watch that, and you're going to shop. <sighs> It's, uh, I mean, it's not even like really, a, it's literally just a TNT block. Yeah, that's, that's, it's funny. Uh, but uh, anyway, you know, comedy's like, dead. That's not, that's not the type of comedies I like. Comedy, like comedy's comedy dead. So I think it dead. depends on the British comedy because I've watched a few British comedies that I've loved and I've watched some that I've absolutely fucking abhorred. And like people tell me like, oh, that's actually pretty good. And I'm like, no, the fuck it is. That's not. Are you funny. thinking about the the it crab? I love the it crab. Really, I don't much care. About um, that. I have an episode for you to watch. I, I'm sorry. Sure. I'm sorry. It's it though. Yeah. 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 That's that's the joke. I thought. Yeah, okay. that's more zoomer humor. But oh, uh, that's more zoomer humor. What you just did, zoomer humor. Calling it the it crowd instead of the IT crowd? Yeah. But Is listen, a pun? Here. Are puns Zoomer humor? I don't think you're in. Does that qualify as a pun? That. It's not a pun. It absolutely <laughs> does. It's not. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean it's not a pun? It's, it's a, a play pun. on words. I it, originally like it. it. Originally, that was the that was the meme, but you can't just like meme it back. What? That's not how it works. You can't reverse meme it. Wait, is is the it crowd a saying though? Yeah. Yes. Oh, is it? Like you're part of the it crowd. That's why it's <laughs> the IT crowd. Look, but keep, it's not I... my fault that you just don't know shit. Like, what? I'm being held accountable. That is also zoomer humor to be like, you just don't know this meme. <laughs> but uh, um. Yeah, I have an episode for you to watch. One one single episode of the IT crowd. I think you'll be like, I think you'll change your mind. I've seen moments that I like. I just haven't seen a full episode where I'm like, yes. It's always been like. I really like Richard uh, Ayoade. Yeah, he's the best part of the show. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Everyone should watch Taskmaster. I love that show. Oh, that's hilarious. I binged that when it went to YouTube. Like during the coronavirus, that was yeah. like my go-to. 
Um, I've watched a lot of panel shows. QI was my insert panel show. I, I started watching so many panel shows. Very anyway, well. anyway, this episode went off the rails many times. Um, it's been 55 minutes. We probably talked about this movie for like 15 of those. Uh, don't All watch right. this movie. But thanks for listening. It's it's fine. If you watch this movie... No, just don't watch this you, movie. Just you don't, won't just have a bad time. Don't watch this movie. Uh, Jonathan, it's your pick next week. Do you have mm-hmm. a pick in mind? Oh, goodness. I haven't thought about this. Well, now I want to pick a comedy. And I want to pick a Zoomer humor comedy that I like. Uh, <laughs> you want to watch just to, movie? just to punish you. What counts as uh, Zoomer humor comedies? Like, like how, how recent would they have to be? I was going to go with the Lego movie. The first one. Yeah, I guess that counts. Oh, it totally does. The attention span of that movie is like non-existent. Yeah. yeah. I watched that movie in theaters, and mm-hmm. I remember thinking it was fine. And now as I'm thinking about the prospect of watching that movie again, I'm like, oh no, that's not going to be a good experience. Really? Okay. The same thing. <laughs> Don't Here's close thing. your mind off. It might surprise you. All I, all I think uh, that I can remember is that the... <clears throat> I like. Why am I making my case worse? Why don't I just do like one that I never? I I, I liked. I liked the movie. Um, I I didn't didn't like Chris Pratt in that movie, even though I liked Chris. I didn't like Chris, or I liked Chris Pratt at the time. Now I've fallen off Chris Pratt, which I think will make it a substantially worse movie. All right, wait, wait. wait. Now I want to change it. Uh, (laughs) Let's let's go with uh, Monty Python. Holy grail! That's not that's not Zoomer. That's fucking boomer. I know that that's not. I know that that's not zoomer humor, but I also love that movie. Right, as it's well. a good movie. Yeah, that, but right, I, I go, wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. If I've I choose, if I oh, if really? I choose, take a risk, and I know that you guys will probably not like it as much, is that going to be better than just going with a movie that I know that everybody loves? Monty Python's yeah. definitely a lame pick. I will say that because, like, obviously we're going to like Monty Python. All right. Okay. 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 You haven't seen it, but you're going to like Monty Python. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's no doubt. I don't know though. I I remember getting like mad because right. people keep going. All right, out. this next pick cycle is comedy pick cycle. So somebody make Brendan, you choose that one. I'll go with Lego Movie. I'll stick to my guns. Oh yikes! <laughs> if you pick Lego Movie, that's two bad moves in a row, which means I have to punish you guys with a bad movie. But you don't know. Come on, you don't know it's gonna be bad. I, you already punished us with a bad comedy movie, Brendan. You. I fuck. genuinely like this movie. Yeah, we'll watch Mouse Hunt again. <laughs> it is. Yeah, you can't do that. We can. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't put it in the bylaws. Oh God! <laughs> I just. I'll just be like, yeah, it. I saw it. Yeah, again. I definitely it's watched it. Worse. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's even worse than I remember. Does Open Water count as a comedy movie? <laughs> uh, yeah. Does After the Last Airbender? Oh, jeez. Anyway, we need to end this episode. (laughs) Uh, I'm done with it. Done with this movie. I never want to think about it again. And I won't. Uh, So thanks for listening. We'll see you next time with the fucking Lego movie. The movie was a magnum opus. Jonathan, say your thing so I can end this. Bye.